Yes. Uh, if you look at this uh, Kone uh, comprehensive calculation spreadsheet, we have done everything so far. We calculated the daily return, annual return, uh, the daily market risk, annual market risk, daily total risk, the annualized risk and everything. But this, this part, this part, I haven't explained it. And I will not be able to explain it because we have not discussed a theory which is called capital asset pricing model or as an abbreviation we call it capital This is the most widely studied theory of finance in the universities for the undergraduate programs. Capital asset pricing model. And this model, uh, if you see, uh, I, I don't like to do the history, but this was by John Lindner, Jack Trainer, William Sharp. Um, and this is an extension of this very famous professor, Harry Markovich. And so far, uh, this theory, which is very simple, when I explain it to you, it, it will be awfully simple. And you will be asking me, how can this theory win three Nobel Prizes? And from time to time, this theory has won three Nobel Prizes in economics. I think in a day or two, they will also declare the next uh, Nobel Prize award in economics. I think they have declared already in chemistry, biology, and literature. So maybe by tonight, they will explain, they will declare who wins the next in, in economics. But anyways, uh, this theory has won three Nobel Prizes in economics. Uh, if I need to explain this theory, I first ask you, have you seen, sorry, sorry. <laughs> have you seen the, in athletics, the hurdle race? I think it's the 110 meters hurdle race, I think which is all the, the different events, but have you seen the hurdles race hmm? in athletics? Have you, Lotta? Mm -hmm. What is special about hurdle race? What do you, when you look at the hurdle race, uh, what is a special thing, is any observation you make? The obstacles for all athletes are the same height. Hmm? In the same way, so can I say that if you want to win the race, you must jump at least over the hurdle. You know, I'm sure if you are in running, uh, I'm yet to see that if an athlete start running and he, he collides with the hurdle, the foot collides with the hurdle, uh, it will hurt you and you will not be able to win the race, basically. So the one quality of the winner of the hurdle race is that you jump over all the hurdles. Right? It doesn't matter. You jump by one inch or you jump by 10 inches or by one foot or even more. As long as you jump over the hurdle, you may win. But if you touch the hurdle or if you jump below the hurdle, for sure you will not win. In finance, we can say that this company has produced 12%, 13%, 15%. But then we are also interested to know what is the minimum this company must give me so that I invest in this company. For example, uh, if the Bank of Finland is giving you 1% rate of interest a year, does it mean that any company in Finland should give you 1% and you will invest it? No. For different companies, the hurdles are different. 
If you invest in a retail company, the hurdle rate will be low. If you invest in a growth company, the hurdle rate can go up because it's risky. If you invest in a new, newly formed startup, the hurdle rate will be very high. If you invest in a company which has a history, legacy, culture, tradition of over 100 years, the hurdle rate will be low because the risk is low. They have such a huge conglomerate. So one is the actual observed rate of return, which you have learned by now, how to calculate the daily stock return and how to make it annualized. That is actual return. The second return is called theoretical return. How much this company in theory must produce to the minimum that the investors are happy with this company. They don't leave it. What is the minimum the company should generate to keep investors with it? Do you get my point? The two things, the minimum bond, the minimum affiliation, the minimum reward, which the company must give to its investors is determined by this theory called CAPM. If your actual performance is over this minimum, great. But if your actual performance is below this performance, then not great. And how do we know that what is the minimum expectation of my investors from me? We use the theory called capital asset pricing model. Okay, and it's quite simple. It's very simple theory. Um, I try to bring it in the, but anyway, you can see, well, actually I can do this way. I can actually write it uh, in the, uh, 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 oh no, I need to share the whiteboard, but I will not be able to share it because I stopped sharing. Mm. Pause, sure. So, uh, resume share, yeah. But you can't see it here. Now, if I have to, um, if I need to write some text, then CAPM is equal to R return. I will call it expected. Is equal to a risk free rate risk free rate. Let's call it RF R small F So this is uh, R of, let me do it again. It's uh, expected return. Is equal to risk free rate, which is RF plus beta, you know beta? Multiply by market return. minus risk free rate. This is the theory by Kaplan. That whenever, now we have seen uh, in case of, uh, we have seen in case of Kone, we calculated its actual return, did we? But the question is, what is minimum expectation from Kone? Then we apply this formula. 
How do we do it? We, we take risk-free rate plus beta coefficient, have it, multiply by the market return minus risk-free rate, and we put them in the bracket. Uh, one thing I want to share with you is that this second term, which is equal to market return minus risk-free rate is also known as, this difference between the two terms is also known as risk premium. Risk premium. Risk premium, which means that how much market pay you more, or rather market risk premium, yeah? It's called market, sorry, market risk premium. So how much market is giving you more to compensate for the risk you take by investing in stock market and not by investing in the treasury bills or the bonds issued by the bank of the the central bank of the country, right? This is called the market risk premium. Do you get my point? Mm -hmm. If you invest in the market, stock market, it's riskier than you invest in the treasury bills. So this difference shows that how much is the compensation you get for the risk you take by investing in the stock market. Now, is this clear to you, this, this whole thing? And this is the formula as which I wrote risk free rate is RF plus beta RM minus RF. RM is the market rate of return, and RF is the risk free rate. Remember, I showed it to you. These are in the symbolic terms, and this this would be expected rate. Let's say Kone. How much you expect from Kone? Hmm? We know how much Kone has produced, but we don't know how much is the expectation from Kone. Well, it's quite simple. If you go to go to new share, uh, okay, I do, and I share the spreadsheet with you. Once again, now I think we can understand. Do you know what? No. I write here expected return Kone, and I write that I, I calculate it by which model? Capum. And this is what we get H5, risk free rate. H5 plus plus F2 F2 beta times bracket RM H9 H9 is your um, annualized market return H9 is annualized market return minus H5, risk-free rate. Once again, bracket closes. There we go, 17%. 17%. It means that 17%, uh, as I said, that's why I gave you an example of a hurdle race, 17.46 is a hurdle. If Kone is able to give you 
17.46 is is able to give you less than 17.46 i will be very unhappy as an investor i would find some alternative investment i expect from kone based on its last six years performance that it will give me 17.46 so that's like a benchmark Expected return or expected annual return. Yeah. So this is the expected annual return. And this is the realized, the realized, the actual return. And is it so that the realized return is more than expected return? Yeah. Thus, this difference between the two is called Jensen's alpha. It's a very important concept and we use it in empirical research in like many of my students who do thesis they do they calculate jensen's alpha that this is a difference between what you do and what is expected from you do you get my point now if you see here we have three we have three returns here one is the company's return annualized the second is the market's return annualized the th third is expected return annualized when you see this this and this do you find something do you find some some sort of some ideas the idea is that here i'm comparing your actual performance with the whole market Mm -hmm. And when I compare this and this, I'm comparing you with yourself. What you do and what is expected from you. You see a difference? Do you see a difference? If I organize a test in the class, and my last six years' experience shows that. The average grades of the class are 3.5. And you are getting four. So when I compare you with an external benchmark, you overperform, do you? Because the 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 my last six years average is that the average class grades are 3.5, and you your actual grades are four. You beat the average, you beat the market. Can I say it? But you have been a great student all year. You've been doing all assignments. Lots of participation in the class, everything was good. I was expecting that you will get five. You got four. When I compare you with the average grades, you've you done a good job, but when I compare you with yourself, I'm disappointed. So I can say that my Jensen alpha is minus one because I was expecting you to get five. You got four. You beat the average, but you have not beaten your expectation, haven't you? So the Jensen alpha is an internal comparison. I compare you with yourself. I compare your actuality with the anticipation. Whereas here, I compare the company performance with the outside external market comparison. Here, I compare what you do and what you were expected to do. Both fronts, I'm happy that Kone not only have beaten the market, but Kone has also beaten the expectation from it. And look, investors were expecting low from Kone in comparison to the market so people were having very low profile for, for kone but kone has uh, shut the mouth of its critics by not only beating the market but also the minimum expectation from kone so the hurdle great so overall uh, the jensen alpha uh, is the difference between your actual performance minus expected performance okay when you are compared with yourself that's Jensen's alpha. So this is positive. Well, you have overperformed uh, against yourself. Okay? That sounds sense?
So this is called Jensen Alpha. So I think we have done already now uh, Kuhn's comprehensive, uh, you know, calculations. Now, if you are happy with this spreadsheet, and if I take you back to the slides, mm, I share the slides with you now. And if I take you back, this is task two. In task two, what you require to do, you make a portfolio. Can you make a portfolio now? Can you? And by the way, in Optima, there is a spreadsheet called portfolio. So I just discussed with you how you can pick up some companies and make a portfolio. And then, uh, when you have the portfolio, you need to uh, last three years, you need to make a portfolio for, and you need to decompose the risk into, you know the decomposition of risk? Into systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Systematic risk and unsystematic risk. But when you look at the task three, Take a portfolio of at least two years. I would say that you take three years because you have in the previous task you have taken three years here, right? You can carry on the same companies, everything same for this. You don't have to pick up separate companies, separate time period for each task. Rather, you stick with some companies and carry on with them for all the tasks. So I would say task three is just an extension of task two. All right. And what you need to do is, you need to give some declaration that who you are, and I give you $1 million or whatever to spend. Uh, invest in stocks, uh, make a declaration, are you risk lover, risk averse, risk neutral investor, are you value-based or a growth-based investor? So clarify who you are, but most importantly, you need to take positions on 30th of July, 2019, and 30th of September, 2019. What do you mean by position? Position is that, you take companies first, based on who you are, value-based, growth-based, I prefer, of course, this can be a little bit plus minus. It's not a, I'm not very fussy about it. But I expect that you start trading from 10th January, 2016. So you have firm X, Y, Z. And then you make a portfolio and you finish trading, not finish, but Take a pause on trading on 30th of July, 2019. So you take the individual companies and you get, then you make a portfolio out of it. Uh, look at the portfolio spreadsheet in Optima. And then you take a pause of trading and find out, find out exactly what we have done in Kone, comprehensive spreadsheet. How much is your annualized return? How much is the expected return from you? How much is the market return annualized? How much is the total risk? So basically you will do nothing more, nothing less, but whatever is done in Kone comprehensive calculation, you will do that. When, when? on 30th of July, 2019, okay? But then the story will not end here. So the first phase is that you do all the calculation as I mentioned in Kone comprehensive calculations on 30th of July, 2019. But then you carry on, you carry on again till September 30th, 2019. And again, calculate everything. 
which you have done in Kone Comprehensive Calculation Spreadsheet. The reason I want you to do this calculation two times is that I want you to check has your return increased more than in proportion to risk? Has systematic risk changed or declined or has unsystematic risk changed or declined over two, over how many months? Two months, three months or two months, whatever. But when you do this calculation, stage one, this is stage one and this is stage Two. For each stage, your starting point should be 10th of July 2016. Last year, a student committed a mistake, a group committed a mistake. What they did, they did the first phase from here to here, and then they forgot they calculated second phase only between these two months. No, 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 no. The starting point from here to here, and then from here to here. Because two months data is not enough to make any conclusion. Do you get my point? So you, you don't even have to ask me what to calculate. Just do whatever is done in Kone comprehensive calculation two times. Two times. And by the way, because you have to make some interpretations, don't you? What you do at the end, when this task is completed, that you have the annualized form return, period one, period two. You have the annualized risk period one period two you have the total systematic risk period one two you have the total unsystematic risk one two then you also have the uh, annualized market return one two then you have the annualized market risk phase one phase two and then what is left you also have the CAPM return, what is expected from you? What is expected from you on the 30th of July may not be the same as what expected from you on the 30th of September. Are you with me? Because the risk things are changing. So then you also have the expected return, expected return, let's call it CAPM by CAPM. Phase one or period one and two. And then when you have this one, when you have this one, the difference between them will be called Jensen's alpha. Jensen's. It could be possible that you have beaten the market in this period, but not in this period. Who knows? So basically, uh, if you look at all these variables, they are nothing but all the calculations you have done uh, for Kone comprehensive calculations. But it would be nice after you do this calculation to put these numbers in some comparison table so that you can, when you explain it, you have uninterrupted arguments. Okay. And as a matter of fact, if you do this thing, then your task four is automatically included because that's what you're required to do, Jensen's alpha. 
right? Because in this Kone comprehensive calculation, uh, I also cover Jensen Alpha. So primarily, uh, your task three and four can actually be combined. I mean, if I asked you, hey, where is your task three? Where is task four? You say, shall we combine it? I have no problem. Please do it. Because task four is exclusively based on Jensen's alpha, yeah? But you can also compress, because if you, if you go by Kone comprehensive spreadsheet, I have done Jensen's alpha there as well. So if you want, you can combine the task three and four. That's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. But when we come back after break, I will discuss a little bit conceptual thing of Jensen's alpha. Here I've done something opposite. I have explained to you already how to calculate Jensen's alpha, but I will go into a little bit of more theory of Jensen's alpha uh, when you come back. Okay. So that's it for today. Thank you very much.